Hey there. So tonight I thought I would bring out another Old Navy radio. This is another piece from my military radio collection, which has focused down into basically the radios from the interbellum, that is the period between the war, world wars. Basically that sort of means the 1920s and 1930s. This is a Navy set, and it is one of the two receivers that you find in a model RAM. Now this, yeah, it's a weird one. It's uh, back in uh, mid-1935, Western Electric was contracted by the Navy to produce 40 sets of a transmitter called GN and the matching receivers called RAM. This is one of the receivers. Apparently the receivers came in sets. This one is the lower frequency version, covers 200 to 1500 kilohertz, and the other one is the higher frequency version, which covers, uh, well, presumably 1500 to probably about 9000 uh, kilohertz. This is interesting in that it is an early superhead. This actually might be the first Navy superhead. I don't know. Let's take a look at this. So you can see it's actually, well, it's, it's two pieces. You have a seam. It's basically two cubes put together. What is interesting is that the front section is called the RF tuner. And the rear section is the IF and AF amp. Now, presumably, uh, you must realize I have zero data on this. I do not have a technical manual. I have no technical information. All I have is a few blurbs I pulled out of, I think it was an old radio and sound bulletin from the mid-30s. Presumably, the rear end was the same for both, both receivers. And the front end, the tuner section, is what changed. Let's take a look at the phrase, face here. Kind of a <laughs> kind of a busy face, isn't it? Well, let's see. We have obviously antenna, alignment input, ground post. These are a couple, I, I believe these are the uh, standard power plug that the Navy liked in their aircraft sets from the 30s, and actually they used it into World War II. Tuning. This one has a crank, but no doubt a spline could be hooked up to uh, a control box. This is the uh, band switch. Kind of interesting in that it is not a switch, but rather you're turning something inside. I haven't actually been inside this simply because it's, oh, it's kind of a complicated thing, and without a manual, I, I don't want to quite touch it yet. Now, one interesting thing about this is the control box. As it's set up right now, it is pretty much set up for non-remote, for local use. So, you got a voice and CW, you got a place for your headphones, various uh, uh, controls for your, your volume. But if you wanted to remote this, check this out. This is cool. A feature I've never seen in a set uh, later than this a little thumb screw here and then the remote control box actually fits in front and on uh, onto the receiver so you could mount this elsewhere in the airplane who knows somewhere you just run a cable very cool this is indeed the volume control unit Nice tags, as the 1930s Navy used to used to do a great job at. But I've never seen this feature replicated. Presumably, the higher frequency receiver was pretty much the same. Uh, let's see, we got a couple of shock mounts. Power comes through the rear. This, I don't know what this is about. Maybe hacked in. I don't know. That's relatively clean hole. It may not be ham hacked. I don't know. 
course, you got to have nice hatches for Navy stuff. And the tubes are actually nothing special. We do not have interesting Western Electric tubes in here, so don't get too excited. They're uh, kind of standard types, big pin types from the mid-30s. I have a little bit of a tuning chart here, so you can kind of kind of uh, estimate where you are with the four bands. Why did this set fail to be adopted? Who knows? Like I said, they, the, uh, the Navy contracted Western Electric to make 40 of these uh, dual receiver sets. This is serial number one, by the way. Is it the only one they made? Maybe the contract didn't run its course? Who knows? Uh, well, I, I take that back. Probably not, because I actually do have the transmitter, a GN. It's in terrible, terrible condition. It's been very much ham-hacked. But that Serial number, I believe, is beyond one. So presumably they actually made all 40 sets. In the very bit of a uh, little bit of information I have, uh, they, the Navy called these experimental sets, but I don't see anything on the tags to indicate that they were experimental. Usually experimental sets have some sort of special tag of some sort, some sort of nomenclature that says, hey, this is experimental. I suspect it may just be that uh, Western Electric kind of was given this contract in, in the Depression. They needed some work. The Navy had quite a bit more money than the uh, than the Army did back then, so they could afford to to dish out contracts for for new equipments. This is one of them. 1935 apparently uh, did not get uh, did not get adopted. This is the only one I've ever seen. Apart from the, well, I guess the GN transmitter. Although I have heard there's another GN somewhere out in California. I'd certainly like to swap, swap stories because, hey, I have no information, no technical manual, no, no nothing for this set. Just a few little blurbs and some stock catalogs and uh, some information I got from, I think, an old radio and sound bolt. And so if any of you guys have anything about GN or RAM... Let me know. You can leave it in the comments. I'd certainly appreciate that because this is, I don't quite want to just start ripping into this thing without some, without a schematic and such like that. I would like to fire it up. AM broadcast band, so hey, you can listen to the ball game. Uh, I'd certainly like to find a, a matching high frequency receiver. Doubt I ever will, but hey, hope springs eternal. So anyway, here, I thought I'd give you a, a look at this uh, weird set. It's, uh, I guess, between the R RU and uh, the later uh, command sets from ARC, the R-A-V-R-A-T, and uh, I guess even the G-E-R-A-X. Those were all a bit later, but this one, 1935. Western Electric, R-A-M. Okay, well, if you like this, leave a like, maybe subscribe. See if I can dig out some more of my 1930s military stuff. I do like the kind of refined, crude uh, ideas that they had back then. Uh, maybe someday I'll even drag out the GN, even though it's kind of... It's been hacked. Anyway, have any questions or whatever? Leave those in the comments, too. Okay, see you later. Bye.